Well, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Whitaker, and I'm a business, I'm sorry, I'm the field development and training manager with One Hope, and I am so excited to be here with all of you today. We have a great tips from the top scheduled for you. Um, one of our um, senior executive directors from Philadelphia, Laura Demetrio, is going to share what she's doing right now in her team that's creating explosive growth. Really quick, I just want to share with you that um, when it comes to recruiting and building your teams and really growing your business, a lot of times everybody thinks that it's going to take a lot of um, skill building and there's some sort of secret that um, is going to help you build um, or something that maybe you don't know or maybe you feel like you're not ready to do it, especially if you're a new CEO. But I'm here to tell you that it's really just about being yourself it's about having fun in the business, believing in your opportunity, and, and talking to people, and, and sharing this with people. Because we're an impact company, and we want to continue to make an impact. And for that reason, we want to add people to our team so that we can help spread what we are doing, all the good that we're doing here at One Hope. So that's really what recruiting is all about. And so I had the pleasure back in February, I believe it was my second day with, uh, with One Hope, and, and I had dinner with Laura Demetrio, and she taught me what she is doing. She shared with me what she's been doing to be able to grow her business. And just so you guys know, uh, she's been with us for what, about 18 months, Laura? Something like that. And in the 18 months that she's been with us, her team has grown to almost 200 CEOs. And she and her team are very much responsible for a lot of the explosive growth that we have had in the state of, in the state of, um, of Pennsylvania. As you guys are joining, if you could, just make sure that you're muted. We are recording this call, and it was so helpful. Okay. Just a moment, please. I'm just going to make sure we have all the lines muted that need to be muted. That's great. So we don't have the background noise. So once again, back to Laura and our dinner, our infamous dinner that we had. She had some amazing things to share with me about how she is growing her team and just how Pennsylvania is growing too. So I invited her to share with all of you today the things that she shared with me. And, um, and you know, uh, Laura has a, a family of, I think, three kids, three kids, yep. and a great husband by the name of Mark who is helping her with her business. He's very much a part of this, not just as a support person, but he likes to do a lot of things with her in the business. And so Laura, I'm gonna turn the call over to you. Congratulations on your success. And we can't wait to hear what you have to share. Thank you so much, Chris, for the warm introduction. I am so happy to be here and have the opportunity to share some tips on the importance of following up with you all. Um, I'm excited to see you all on the call because that means that you're interested and committed to building your team and creating a greater impact of Via One Hope. So before we begin, let me start with my thoughts on the follow-up because really it is so important. It's so much more than just following up. I believe that if you want to be successful with your business, you have to be committed with a few disciplines that all impact our effectiveness in sharing the mission and gaining interest from corporate clients, potential CEOs, and customers. So from now on, when you think of following up, I want you to think of these four topics. Consistency, personal development, enthusiasm, and the follow-up. Some of you may be thinking, what does all of this have to do with following up? I promise that we will get there and it'll be worth your time. I will cover each of these areas and you will see why these four categories all depend on each other and are essential for your success in this business. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's start at the top of the list. As consistency is the key in everything you do with your business. I always joke with my team that consistency is my superpower. I am consistent at being consistent. When I think of consistency, I always think about a huge wheel that has a handle on the side of it. With this business, imagine that you are tasked with turning this wheel 
that is a thousand pounds. If you start to lift the handle to this giant wheel, what happens if you give it a small push? Then leave it the next day, not a whole lot. Then following the day you walk by, you're frustrated from the lack of movement, you give it a kick and you revisit the next day. Naturally, you're busy over the next few days, so you don't give it a second thought. Then at the end of the week, you give it one small push. Because let's face it, we're all tired from our days at work and we leave it for another time. So let me ask you, has that wheel turned at all over the course of the week? Absolutely not. What if you focused some consistent effort throughout the day, each day? Would that wheel begin to move? Of course it would. Not only would it begin to move, but once you get that wheel to turn over, the weight of it will help carry it forward, which means it will take less effort on your part to keep it spinning. Once it picks up the pace, it begins to run itself with very little effort and that wheel just keeps on turning. We like to call this momentum and momentum is key for your business. Otherwise, you will run out of potentials to follow up with. If you aren't consistent with your business and reminding your customers that you are still working it, you will fall out of their minds and struggle to keep that wheel moving. So ride the momentum when you start your business. That's really what I've been doing for the last year and a half. I make this a high priority in my business to ensure I have a constant flow of activity between parties, events, corporate contacts, and potential CEOs. But without consistency, there's little need to follow up because your funnel has dried up. So that brings us to personal development. Unfortunately, being consistent isn't always enough by itself. But why should we care about personal development? Well, the short answer is, in life, we don't get what we want. We get in life what we are what we are. If you want to be more, we have to, if we want to be more, we have to, if we want more, I'm sorry, we have to be more. So the only way we're able to be more is by committing to personal development. So let's face it, this is our business and we need to take extreme ownership of it. If you feel like you need additional insights on some sales and marketing, then a book I would recommend maybe would be the Sales Bible. If you feel like you want to build your team but don't know where to start, pick up some books like How to Win Friends and Influence Others or Untethered Soul. Maybe you have a team but would like to become a more effective leader. Then you should be reading books like You Are a Badass or Being a Motivational Leader or H3 Leadership. If you're in a funk and just need to be moving or reaffirm why you're doing what you're doing, check out The Slight Edge or with Big Magic. Committing to personal development and reading for at least 15 minutes each day will have a significant impact on your life, both personally and professionally. I make it a point to do this every day and has completely changed my leadership ability, my confidence, my stress levels, um, and it really has been my balance. And I feel like I've been a better, better person and leader by incorporating these habits into my routine. Most importantly, you cannot expect your teams to be growing and developing into these kinds of leadership roles if you are also not committed to developing yourself personally. Naturally, personal development and enthusiasm work hand in hand. You need to be enthusiastic and keep in mind, people work with those they like and feel comfortable with. So you have to stay positive and be enthusiastic about your business, otherwise they will find someone else who is. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, your vibe attracts your tribe. But how does that fit into all of this and why should we pay attention to it? This refers to the law of attraction. In short, you get what you put out. And this creeps into so many aspects of our business and our lives. Surprisingly enough, the most common one I hear about is the perception of network marketing. If you have reservations and hesitations on the industry, itself, you are pushing that vibe. And most certainly you are attracting people with those same feelings. So how do I feel about this? 
Well, I personally think that One Hope is a company that is making an incredible difference in the world and making an amazing impact in the lives of so many. And we are so fortunate to be along for the ride. Next time you feel down or uncomfortable about building your team or sounding too MLM-y, just remember when you build your team, you are empowering more individuals and enabling them to help share our mission and grow the One Hope impact. That is super powerful and something we should all be excited about and proud. So share it passionately. Lastly, but certainly not least, we arrive at follow-ups. We have been working our business consistently. We've been working on our craft by reading books related to the areas we want to grow and develop, and we have been doing it passionately. So now what? Now we need to review our list. We should have multiple lists that show who is interested in our products, our business, and hosting our events. If you're curious, I know, if you're curious um, how I kind of keep track of my list and perform my follow-ups, um, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to share that with you. Um, so here's a question. How often do you think we should be following up? One to two times maybe? Think about your own business. How often do you follow up before you convince yourself that you're bothering someone? Maybe three times max? Let me share some stats with you that I found really interesting. Statistically speaking, 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect at all from the time that they met them. 25% of salespeople make a second attempt, but then they stop. 12% of salespeople make only three contacts. Only 10% of sales make more than three contacts. 10%, that's crazy. So let's, so, let's, so let's see where I'm going. This is what I think is interesting. 2% of sales are made on the first contact. 3% of sales are made on the second contact. Does anybody see a trend here? It looks like the more we follow up, the better our chances are. So let's keep going. 5% of sales are made on the third contact. 10% made on the fourth. Ready for this one? 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So how many of you would prefer a 2% chance versus an 80% chance? So what are these numbers telling us? Simply put, we need to follow up more and we aren't bothering people. They aren't annoyed and we aren't scaring them away by increased follow-ups. So that's a good thing. So why aren't we growing our teams by the numbers that we want? Why aren't we making the sales we want? Why don't we have the corporate contacts and client base that we want? This can all be linked directly to the amount of follow-ups that you are making. Now that we know that follow-ups are the lifeblood of our business, why don't we do it more often? I have found that the main reason for all of this is self-talk. Let's be honest. We need to get rid of the self-talk, and you know what I mean. That annoying little voice that questions every decision and every idea that comes into our brain. The one that convinces us that we're just being too pushy or too salesy or too annoying. Yeah, we need it to go. We are simply doing our job and working for the cause and sharing our mission. One tip that I use often is to give the, the potential CEO or customer a way out. If they aren't responding to my messages or texts, I will be upfront and tell them I don't wanna bother them if they're not interested. Just let me know and I promise you I won't bother you anymore. And you know what happens when I do that? I usually get a response back saying, oh, you're not a bother. It's just been a really crazy week. I have been running around with the kids all day, but I'm still interested and I wanna hear more. I follow up with people that have spanned years, literally years, never harassing and never being pushy, but just casual conversations 
that we, that we re revisit the ideas. And actually, many of them are on our team now um, because of the consistent follow-ups, the meaningful conversations, and the relationships that have been developed. So really, what's the moral of the story? We can't let our minds create these stories as to why they aren't answering. You know, like, for instance, if you think that you saw somebody in the store and you didn't say hi, and now you think that they're going to be mad at you because they know that you saw them. Um, or what if you said something that could have been construed to be offensive? Or maybe you put up a post on Facebook and now you think they're mad at you. The list goes on and on. Our self-talk is a safety net that is meant to keep us in our comfort zones. When it comes to your business, have those few seconds of courage and carry on. Work on this every single day. The best advice I can give you for how to do this is to know your why. Have it written down and fixed into your memory. When you don't have the courage or want to delay the follow-up, or if you're just feeling like quitting, remember your why. It will give you the strength to push on. This is super important and will help you get past your fear of rejection. Just remember, life begins on the other side of your comfort zone. As we have mentioned already, this is an amazing opportunity and we should share it proudly. So don't prejudge. And here's a great example of this. I'm not sure how many of you have heard of Ringing Rocks, but it's a beautiful campground located in Pennsylvania. It's essentially a huge field of rocks. People climb through them and they bang on the rocks with hammers or whatever else to make them ring. So where am I going? Picture for a moment a huge field of rocks. Rocks of all shapes, sizes, and features. Maybe some are cracked, maybe some are vibrant, others dull. Just imagine all sorts of variations. What if I told you that in all of those rocks, a quarter of them had something marked on them, maybe a glittery gold star at the bottom? What if I told you that each of these specially marked rock stars were worth thousands of dollars? How would you react to this information? Would you walk around the field pointing at rocks saying, oh, you're cracked, you couldn't possibly be a rock star, this is too dull, oh, that one couldn't be either? I know I wouldn't. I would start at the beginning, wherever I was, with consistency and enthusiasm, turning over those rocks, each and every one, checking their marks and sorting them into piles, making lists. Also, be a problem solver, not a word vomiter. What does this mean? Well, it's super simple. This business is all about building relationships and getting to know people. During this process, you get to know what people need and want. Maybe they want to travel but are terrible at saving. Maybe you could help by offering One Hope, since they could earn some extra funds that could be tucked away on their paylution, as well as work towards free vacations. Maybe another friend wants some of their own time because they are home with their kids all day. I know I did. I love my kids, but I also love the adult time over a nice glass of wine. Maybe they enjoy wine and socializing as well. Aim to solve these types of problems. If our One Hope opportunity fits into their lives and can help with their goals, then that's great. If not, that's okay too. Maybe you can connect, connect with them or maybe you can connect them to someone else or another opportunity that might align more to their needs. If they ask you how much does it cost to join, simply answer $99 and wait for the next question. Don't tell them about your amazing founder and leadership team, although it is really tempting. Don't tell them that we can earn trips and we can offer corporate gifting. Don't dive into our impact and our cause partners. A simple $99 will do. Trust in your opportunity and offerings that they will be interested in asking follow-up questions and know that you don't have to dump all of the info onto them at once. Also remember to let them lead the conversation and only answer questions that they have. If the conversation goes silent for a while, use different informational, informational tools and approaches. 
If they are ignoring you on Facebook, send them a text. If they still aren't getting back to you, send them an email or maybe tag them in a post. If that still doesn't work, give them an out and express your concern for bothering them and see where the conver conversation goes. Also, don't be afraid to ask what their hesitation or objection is. If you know it, if you know it, you can help to ease their concerns. Lastly, for my final tip, make it a habit to continuously add to your network. I know other leaders have mentioned this before and I couldn't agree more with it. Each time I go to an event, if I connect with somebody or if I have a guest that place an order with me, I add them to my Facebook. I wanna keep in contact with them and build a friendship. This is really the only way to venture out of your circle and to expand your business. I can't even tell you that most of my team did not come from you know, my core group of friends and family. I developed it in this way from jumping from parties to vendor events to networking groups, et cetera. Um, so I'm constantly adding to my network. So with that, I will leave you with this. Remember to be yourself. You have your own unique gifts and talents, so be sure to use them to your advantage. For me, I do a lot of my business on Facebook, but that is what works best for me at this point in my life. So your challenge is to find what works for you and run with it. Don't be afraid to be you. Accept the tips from the top and figure out how to incorporate them into your own business and make your light shine. So that's that. Those are my tips from the top. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. Laura, that was great. Thank you so much. I think everybody took lots of notes. You had amazing statistics to share in there that we will post on the community page. Um, you know what I love about what you are, what you shared is, um, it's just what we talked about in the beginning about how important it is to be yourself and to not feel like you have to be someone else or that you have to have a certain technique. It's about um, meeting people where, where they are, but also where you are. Um, it's not about you trying to reinvent, um, you know, who you are to be able to attract people to you because you talked about the power of the law of attraction, which um, is really what it's all about. If you are authentic, if you really believe in this and, and you, um, you know, you're sharing this with people, you're going to attract the, the right people to the business for the right reasons. And, um, you know, there's a lot of questions that I could come up with for you. I absolutely love the ringing rock, um, you know, analogy. And I want to go there and camp now. <laughs> and I want to go pick up rocks and not prejudge those rocks of who the rock stars are. Um, that is really great. And you also touched on self-talk and how important it is that we don't um, talk ourselves out of things or think that we're not worthy or good enough to be able to share this with people or that people would want to work with us. Um, you mentioned Facebook and I know that this is a really big, um, that, you, that you have this style about you because you touched on being yourself. And what, what I loved when we had dinner that night was how you talked about um, really how you follow up with people because that was the big deal was the follow up um, part of it that was like magic because you were persistent and consistent and you, and you always um, stuck with it. Can you just um, touch on that a little bit about how you go about it? Like if it's somebody that you meet at a tasting, how do you get them to, to be following you on Facebook? Um, for tasting, so typically I will add my host and I'll add the guest to Facebook. They're welcome to accept me as a friend. If not, that's okay too. Um, but I really use that tool because I really want them to get to know me and I want them to be able to kind of follow me and be fresh in their minds. So typically I do add them to Facebook and then I kind of regulate my posts. So um, I do, I tend to try and maybe do like one post, like a one hope post a day. And then I, I kind of just mix in some inspirational quotes. That's huge for me. I mean, I do that personally for myself just to keep me in the right state. Of mine but also to share with others if somebody else needs a little pick-me-up for the day um, and then I throw in some family posts but I basically just kind of rotate my feed um, and then I kind of use those posts to kind of help me um, figure out who's interested in what 
So if there's somebody that likes one of my opportunity posts, I'm going to reach out to them. Oh, hey, you know, I just, you know, thank you so much for, you know, liking my business post. You know, would you be interested to hear more information? Um, and then, you know, sometimes I'll get a no. Oh, no, I'm just really supportive. And I like what you said. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Other times they're interested. Um, my typical way of starting the whole follow-up process is then to give them tools, informational tools. And I prefer to email information. I am very much like um, a visual and a hands-on. So before I even want to talk to anybody personally about an opportunity, I want to be provided with information that I can see first. So that's why I always go that route. And I just send them a quick little email, you know, thank you so much for your interest. Um, I always attach, I love the video on YouTube about One Hope. That is like my go-to video that I put in that email. And then I usually just throw in the top 10 reasons of joining. Super simple, easy. Um, I love that it's all bulleted right there for you. And then I usually share the opportunity brochure as well. And that's kind of like my first step of starting that process. And then I reach out and just kind of ask if they've had a chance to look at, look into it. And then I start the conversation, but I really like for them to lead the conversation. So I really just kind of let them ask questions and then I give the information that they're looking for. That's perfect. I love it. So, um, you know, I, I'm just like you where I would want to actually see, I think that the video is powerful. I think both of the videos we have, One Hope and This is a Tree, are both powerful yes. um, for us to be able to share the opportunity. And, um, and then also the um, um, top 10 reasons, of course, is great. And yeah, let them evaluate. And, and I think that it's always about putting the ball in their court, but not doing it in an offensive way, doing it very... Um, you know, very natural. This is, you know, I'm not going to come after you really hard on this. This is something that I truly believe in and I, and I'd love to invite you to it. Then you just give them that information. So um, that's great. I'll tell you what, I'm going to open up the call. I'm going to unmute everybody so that you guys can ask Laura your questions and then we can wrap things up from there. So you guys are all unmuted now, if you choose to be. So um, does anyone have any questions? that they'd like to ask Laura. I do. It's Tracy Manning. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Oh my God. That was amazing. I couldn't take notes fast enough. I had to pull over on the side of the road. <laughs> um, will you be recapping the book that you mentioned? Because I only got, grabbed a few of them and I, that like really spoke to me. So I wanted to make sure that if you could jot that down somewhere. Absolutely. I would love and to. And then I also already... I already sent you a private message that I would absolutely love your follow-up uh, <laughs> techniques and processes because that was Aww. really awesome. Like I'm like sitting in my car in my driveway and I'm inspired to just run inside and like get after it. <laughs> yes, go, go, go. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, thank you, Laura. That's great. Does anyone else have a question for Laura? Questions, comments? Well, we hope that you guys um, got some good nuggets out of this. I know that I did. I took two pages of notes and <laughs> I would have done it that night when we were having dinner too, but we didn't have it. We had such a small table, remember? <laughs> yes, I do remember. Yes, I was thinking everything in my head and it, you, just, you just left such an impression to me. Um, which I know is what you do for everybody. You radiate your positivity and your love for what you're doing with One Hope. And um, I just want everybody, if you take anything away from this, it's about um, really investing in yourself and don't give up. Be consistent in your process. Be consistent with your personal development. Um, that's what's going to attract people to you into this business. And, um, and business is that we're in the business of making an impact. So um, just want to continue encouraging all of you in that area. And um, we'll give one final chance for anybody to ask a question. I'm going to also look in the chat box just to see if there's any there. Andrea said about the, the word vomit. That took me a while to learn too. You get so excited. You get so excited. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I the slight edge is phenomenal. Yes, it is. It is. All right. Anything else, Laura, as we leave? Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to pop on. Oh, it's great to have you. To everybody. Yeah. Oh, wait, we got a question. Awesome. Thank you. We have a question. Are you still on, Laura? I am. Um, oh, what is the best way to let people know that you have started? So it's introducing the business to them. I think it's really what you're comfortable with. Um, again, for me, I threw up a big post announcing on Facebook that I joined via One Hope. I was super excited about it. Um, but I think really just your day-to-day -day activity when you're going out and about. Um, I think it's really important that you talk about via One Hope, this is what you're doing. Um, and just adding it into and incorporating it into your day-to-day -day schedule. That's great, that's great. I love it because you know I think it's just so easy for us to start with a post and it doesn't have to be too much. It can be you know one of the videos, it can be a picture, it can be just something that speaks to your heart and why you're a part of this now. So, um, but yeah, walking and talking about it is huge. That's great. Do you pass out, let's see. Do you pass out a lot of business cards? So this is kind of funny, right, Chris? Because we did talk about this. I, I don't, I don't really pass out a lot of business cards. And again, it's to each their own. It's what you're comfortable with doing. Um, I am more of a, I have to have the conversation almost lead into directly into what I'm doing. Uh, then to really officially say I'm a part of Via One Hope or, you know, um, just kind of what I'm doing. A lot of times I'm more so about building that relationship. So I kind of like to have um, conversations and then kind of slowly trickle in information. And then if it does come to being, you know, I'm a wine rep for this amazing company, then I would hand out their business card. But I don't always hand it out right away. That's just kind of my my way of introducing. Well, I love that. And I think that so many times we are thinking that we need to have a tool, whether it's a business card or a brochure or something else, a catalog to give somebody. It really is um, our passion that comes through our voice. We need to talk more about it and, um, and, and, and also touch on the different areas of where you can um, do it. So you mentioned email, you talked about Facebook, you talked about mm -hmm. Facebook. Base. And so it could be one person and hitting all of those different ways of communicating with them because it's so true about the contacts. I have heard before about um, how sometimes you could be at a tasting and somebody might say, I've been thinking about doing something like this. And it only takes like maybe one or two times for you to talk to them and they say, Yeah, I'll do, I'll do it. But I guarantee you that they've been thinking about this because of maybe four or five or six other contacts they've had with somebody out there about doing something similar. So believe that statistic that it takes between five and 10 contacts to get the yes, but that the percentage is very, very high when you get to those contacts. So um, that, that whole tip there about being consistent and, um, and always asking and inviting is a very important one. All right. Well, thank you again, Laura. Thank you everybody for joining today. Um, let's go out there and let's spread um, the message about One Hope and have a wonderful time building your businesses and get ready for excitement in April because we have our, our recruiting special going on in April. So have fun with that. Yeah. And thank you so much. Good night. Thanks for Good having night. Me. Bye everybody.